Thank you to everyone for joining us virtually to announce the Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards. I'm Michael Phelan, the Director of the Australian Institute of Criminology. I would like to start by first acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land and pay my respects to Elders, past, present and emerging. I would also like to acknowledge and extend our respect to our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander colleagues tuning in today. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our special guests who have contributed to the awards, including the Honourable Karen Andrews, Minister for Home Affairs, New South Wales Police Commissioner, Mick Fuller, Victoria Police Chief Commissioner, Shane Patton, Queensland Police Service Commissioner, Katarina Carroll, South Australia Police Commissioner, Grant Stevens, Tasmania Police Commissioner, Darren Hine, and Western Australian Police Force Acting Commissioner, Cole Blanche. It is also my pleasure to extend a warm welcome to the award winners. Sadly, the pandemic has kept us apart again this year. Yet the relationships between our governments, law enforcement and community are as strong as ever. The Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards recognise and reward good practice in the prevention or reduction of violence and other types of crime in Australia. We have 12 projects being awarded today. These include innovative projects that tackle a wide range of problems, including responses to family and domestic violence, strategies to reduce the crime and violence perpetrated by outlaw motorcycle gangs, reducing the trade in stolen motor vehicles, and body safety education. Our Community Project Award winners have joined us from around the country, including Victoria, Western Australia, South Australia and Queensland. The police-led project winners are from the Queensland Police Service, New South Wales Police Force, Tasmania Police, Victoria Police and Western Australian Police Force. Successful crime prevention programs are important to both law enforcement and the community and I'm grateful to be able to acknowledge such programs today. I would now like to introduce the Minister for Home Affairs, the Honourable Karen Andrews, to give her address. Hello. It is with great pleasure that I join you today to announce the 2021 Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there in person with you. The Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards are a joint initiative between the Commonwealth, State and Territory Governments, coordinated by the Australian Institute of Criminology. They play an important role in encouraging and promoting effective approaches to the prevention of crime and violence and they identify and develop practical projects to reduce crime in the community. This year, the AIC received 40 nominations. It was an outstanding field, with the breadth of nominees demonstrating just how dedicated Australians are to safeguarding their communities and preventing crime. From that field of 40, we are today acknowledging 12 winners. 12 community and police-led programs that are making a real difference in their local areas. Among this year's community project winners, we have programs that are supporting behavioural change to decrease family violence, helping offenders meet court appearance requirements, tackling on and off field violence in sport, decreasing community bike theft, and educating children, young people, their families and professionals on protective behaviours and body safety. Police winners include prevention and intervention programs to reduce knife crime, trade in stolen motor vehicles, youth offending, the incidence of sexual harm to children and the over-representation of Indigenous youth in the criminal justice system. As a New South Wales Police Force Commissioner, it is great to be able to recognise the great work occurring in New South Wales in crime and violence prevention. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chief Commissioner Shane Patton of Victoria Police. I'm really pleased to contribute to recognising the amazing range of programs that are working to reduce crime and violence across Australia and Victoria in particular. I congratulate all the nominees for their commitment to working with others to bring about meaningful change to the lives of individuals as well as of whole communities. I see awards ceremonies like this one as an opportunity to share ideas and good practice and to learn from each other. 
It's therefore fitting that the awards are auspiced by our National Research and Knowledge Centre on Crime and Justice, the Australian Institute of Criminology. I look forward to presenting a number of awards. I am Katarina Carroll, Commissioner of the Queensland Police Service. It is my pleasure to present the Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards for Queensland and to highlight some of the extraordinary projects working to reduce and prevent violence and crime across our state. To our winners in Queensland, I would like to extend a sincere congratulations on behalf of our state. Thank you for your dedication to keeping your communities safe. I'm South Australia Police Commissioner Grant Stevens. The work across all programs being recognised today is tremendous and I'm grateful for the opportunity to present these awards. I'm particularly proud of the work government agencies and community groups are doing in South Australia to tackle crime and violence in this state and the role of SA Police in leading, collaborating and supporting many of the state's groundbreaking projects in crime prevention. Hello, I'm Darren Hine, Commissioner of Tasmania Police. I'm pleased to acknowledge good practice in keeping our community safe through the 2021 Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards. Hi, I'm Cole Blanche, Acting Commissioner of the WA Police Force. I'm proud of each project recognised in these awards, especially those helping to make Western Australia a safe place to live. The officers involved in these projects show great dedication to their community and are a testament to the WA Police Force values. Congratulations to all the nominees and winners today. We will now announce our award winners. After I announce the winner for each category, we will show a brief video about the project. The award will be virtually presented by the relevant State or Territory Police Commissioner. We will then play a pre-recorded acceptance speech from the project's representative. I will follow this format for each award. It is my pleasure to introduce our two Gold Award winners for the year. We have one from the community sector and one from the police sector. The community sector gold award winner is Nijara Jaraneeth Place from Victoria. Alan Thorpe, the CEO, will accept the award. From what I believe, the, the work of John and Alan done for many years and, and in the community about men's, men's business it was established to help Aboriginal men to be given an opportunity to reconnect to their spirit and, and um, deal with underlying issues around anger, anger management, family violence and all different issues affecting family and to strengthen families. The work I've been doing in, in the GARA program and also been involved in the Dardy um, men's groups and camps and, and what it means to win an award like this, there's nothing happening that I know of that's dealing with family violence in this manner and given, given men that are coming out of prisons, that are coming out of courts, an opportunity to straighten their life. So, so to get an award for that is something special. You know, we're, 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 uh, we're doing something right, you know. In my, my time there, I've seen so many men come through there and succeed and turn their life around get employment, get back with their families. And previously before that, you know, you'd have people last a week or two and they're back in, in the courts or back in, in, in prisons. And we're turning that around. We're giving them an opportunity to have a look at their lives, giving them support, getting through um, any underlying trauma. It feels really rewarding to see someone turn their life around. You know, like and 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 stop the anger and violence and 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 even crime. It gives me great pleasure to present this gold award to the community sector winner, Ningara Jaranith Place. Congratulations! 
I commend you on your innovative and effective program to support Aboriginal men to strengthen their culture, adopt positive behaviours and nurture healthy relationships. By tackling family violence, one of our greatest social issues, this program has the potential to transform the safety and lives of countless men, women and children. So on behalf of Dadi Mamaro, I just want to say thank you for the award. We're very proud of the work we do at Dadi and we're very inspired by the work that you know the men come in and, and the families we work um, with, with the change. We are very humbled and, and honoured to, to receive this award for 2021. So thanks again for all the people who voted and, or, or chose us for the award. So thanks again. The Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards also recognise projects organised and facilitated by police that demonstrate a contribution above and beyond normal day-to-day -day policing efforts. The Gold Award winner from the police sector is Project Karyos, Queensland Gangs Exit Program. Acting Chief Superintendent Roger Lowe will accept the award. Project Karyos, Queensland Gangs Exit Program commenced in about 2018 the purpose of the project was to examine the way we treat persons who had left Queensland outlaw motorcycle gangs and what we could do organisationally as a community and Queensland government to better the outcomes for these individuals, their family and the community. So the Queensland Gangs Exit Program is intended to reduce victims of crime. But what we do know from our research is that not all gang members are created equal and there are a number of gang members who see the opportunity and the benefits of leaving and to turn their life around. What we do know from our research is that when individuals leave a gang, it is a turning point in their life. They commit significantly less crime and that's a great benefit to the community. So the opportunity to provide Australia's first gang's exit program is a real turning point, I guess, in the policing involvement in the prevention area in organised crime. What we have seen with the outcomes of the program is persons gaining employment, turning their lives around and becoming productive citizens. We're seeing people turn their back on their associations with gangs and crime. We're seeing people reconnect with their family. We're seeing people reconnect with employment. We're seeing people get a new focus and opportunities in life. Uh, and a lot of the credit uh, for the success of this program comes down to our gangs exit coordinators, our mentors, our psychologists and our employment non-government organisations who partner with us to provide these people with opportunity. The people that come into the EXIT program come from a complex background. They're involved in significant crime. They come with significant mental health concerns and personal costs of joining a gang. And there are many personal costs. So I'm very proud of the investment by our organisation, our Queensland government, our partner agencies, our corrective services in identifying those people who are prepared to change and particularly proud of those people who also take the opportunity to change. I am pleased to present the Police Sector Gold Award to Project Keros. This innovative prevention and intervention program aims to reduce community harm caused by outlaw motorcycle gangs. Project Keros incorporates research, prevention and an exit program which is the first of its kind in Australasia to support outlaw motorcycle gang members to disassociate from a gang. Congratulations to the Project Keros team. The Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards gives us the opportunity to showcase the gang's exit program. It gives us the opportunity to recognise the effort and dedication of the team behind this, from our Queensland Corrective Services partners, our Australian Federal Police, our non-government organisations, our gangs exit coordinators, mentors, our police media personnel. It really is an opportunity for us to showcase the program, for us to get momentum with the program so that it becomes more known within the gangs community and also uh, give recognition to what we believe 
uh, is an incredibly valuable program that invests in stories of redemption, invests in opportunities for reduced crime, uh, and gives people an opportunity to change their lives. The stories we hear from families and those individuals who participated in the program are very compelling. Uh, they are very warming and, and give us momentum and invigorate us to, to continue to identify those persons who would benefit. Uh, and I think the Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards gives us another platform to reach out into the community and into our police and say, we can turn people's lives around. One of our greatest ambitions and dreams is when our agencies are dealing with gang members, we're not only looking at just their involvement in crime, the seizure of drugs, the harm in the house, we're also looking at well, what is going on in the house when it comes to harm to their children, personal relationships and domestic and family violence, and the opportunity to influence their pathway, to influence their trajectory. The Gangs Exit Program gives us that opportunity to influence their trajectory. The Australian Crime and Prevention Violence Awards gives us the opportunity to showcase what this project is capable of and showcase uh, to the community the great work that's being done. There are five silver award winners for this year. There are three from the community sector and two from the police sector. The first community sector silver award is Bike Link from Western Australia. Vince Hughes, CEO of Crime Stoppers Western Australia, will accept the award. Bike Link is a web application that allows users of registered bikes to transfer ownership of bikes and to flag the bikes as lost or stolen. This application was developed by Crime Stoppers WA with a view to curb bike theft reduce the men's on police time and address security personnel data privacy concerns associated with existing similarly motivated commercial services. The impact of Bike Link is phenomenal. Since its launch in December 2019, Bike Link has become a household name. It gets mentioned regularly on community Facebook forums and bike retailers promote it when they sell a bike. The main impact of Bike Link is reducing the ability of bike thieves to unsell those bikes. With BikeLink, I'm proud of the delight I see in people's faces who have had their bikes returned to them. It's actually priceless. Most of all, I'm proud that we were able to deliver a project that not only suited the needs of the community, but also the needs of the police. It's also great to read an independent evaluation that BikeLink is having a very positive impact on the WA community. BikeLink has most certainly been promoted to the community and government, and now it is great to see that they believe in its worth. And local community entities are now heavily promoting Bike Link on our behalf. Bike Link has been promoted on Facebook and other social media platforms. But most importantly, bike retailers are promoting it at community events across metropolitan areas. I would most definitely recommend other community groups and government entities to enter this award. The award is the pinnacle recognition you can receive for your ideas and efforts. Winning an Australian Crime and Violent Prevention Awards gives credibility to your project and makes it very easy to promote it afterwards. I am pleased to present the BikeLink program with a silver award in the community sector for their efforts to reduce bike theft in Australia. They have reduced demand on police time when dealing with stolen bikes and generated a community of like-minded people to assist in preventing bike theft. Congratulations on your award. I would like to thank the Australian Institute of Criminology for this award. It is truly an honour to accept it. Thank you also to Assistant Commissioner Carl Blanch for presenting this award to Bike Link. Winning the Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Award is recognition of our return on our investment and the efforts we have made to make it a success. I would also like to thank Dr. Joe Clare from the University of Western Australia for a very comprehensive evaluation of BikeLink. The evaluation supported our original idea that BikeLink was needed, but most importantly, it was an independent confirmation that BikeLink is definitely working. Thank you.
Our second community sector silver award winner is South Australia's Intensive Bail Supervision Program for Domestic and Family Violence. Darian Shepherd Bailey from the Department of Correctional Services South Australia will accept the award. Domestic violence um, is an issue that is close to many of our hearts. For those that work in the criminal justice system, it's such a concerning issue. The Department for Correctional Services in South Australia has a large and long-standing home detention program. It started in the 1980s and has um, grown uh, over the years and with subsequent developments in technology has become more and more effective. As of 2021, we've got over a thousand offenders subject to electronic monitoring in the community at any time. About 60% of those offenders are subject to intensive bail supervision. Over the years, intensive bail supervision, including electronic monitoring and home detention conditions, have uh, proved across the criminal justice sector to be a really effective form of supervision for offenders that have been charged with domestic violence offences. In terms of the impact of our the electronic monitoring of offenders subject to intensive bail supervision, what our evaluation showed was really promising. It showed that offenders subject to electronic monitoring were less likely to re-offend. They were less likely to, to re-offend against the victim of the uh, current charges. They were more likely to re-engage with case management um, and attend for court. And it gave uh, domestic violence victims greater assurances about their safety in the community. There are so many uh, talented and passionate people that work in the criminal justice sector that uh, dedicate their working lives to community safety and reducing crime. Awards like the Crime Prevention Awards really give recognition to all the hard work and expertise in South Australia and across the nation. Um, I'd encourage people to uh, put their hand up for the awards and use that as a way to demonstrate their successes, uh, share their learnings and ensure that uh, their dedicated and valuable staff uh, get the recognition that they deserve. I'm honoured to present South Australia's Intensive Bail Supervision Program for Domestic and Family Violence with a Silver Award in the Community Sector. This award highlights the great work providing offenders an alternative to custody, which improves domestic violence victim safety due to greater compliance control. Thank you very much. I'm very um, happy to receive the award for uh, the Department for Corrections in South Australia. Um, thanks very much for the uh, Australian Institute of Criminology uh, for their work in um, promoting the awards and in uh, the focus on crime prevention. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, the work around supervising offenders on electronic monitoring in the community is undertaken by our department's intensive compliance team. They're a large team of 70 to 80 people that work across seven days and really do all that hard work on a day-to-day -day basis, engaging, monitoring, motivating offenders that are in the, in the community. And uh, I'd really like to acknowledge um, their work in this award um, they're the team that, that deserve the recognition. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the work that, of the team that were involved in the evaluation of the program. Uh, our SPPP, Strategic uh, Partners Policy and Projects team, uh, our Program Services team that were assisted in developing the evaluation um, have really been uh, critical to the success and quantifying uh, the results for our electronic monitoring program to determine just how successful uh, that it has been. Um, we have a lot of experience in that team um, that are really um, uh, leading the work in our organisation around evidence-based uh, programs. Uh, we're really committed in South Australia to reducing re-offending um, and our electronic monitoring program has um, been really important um, part of that strategy in demonstrating just how effective community-based programs can be um, in reducing re-offending and preventing crime. Um, we have a great team here in South Australia. Uh, thank you to the, to the whole team, uh, in particular our community corrections uh, team for the great work they do in supervising offenders in the community. Thank you.
Our last community sector silver award winner is Don't Let It Be Game Over, Violence Prevention Program from South Australia. Brett Duncanson from the Sammy D Foundation will accept the award. Don't Let It Be The Game Over is a violence prevention program that supports coaches, players and parents to tackle on and off field violence in sport. Don't Let It Be The Game Over was developed in direct response to these issues. The program takes a whole of club approach to tackling violence in sport by educating young people about the impact of violence and providing them with the strategies to identify and prevent harm causing behaviours. Furthermore, educating parents about how their behaviour can negatively impact their children provides young people with access to positive role models. A partnership with the SNFL, juniors and corporate sponsor SA Power Network Networks enabled the Sammy D Foundation to reach over 3,000 young players and almost 2,000 parents across 42 clubs. Our next major goal is to expand these programs to a national level. Winning this award would not only provide the Foundation with a national platform to promote our programs, it would also provide connections to a like-minded group of organisations to also network with. The prestige of winning such a highly esteemed award would provide an opportunity for us to publicly celebrate our valued partners who are working tirelessly alongside us to reduce violence in the community. It also will be priceless from a marketing perspective and provide leverage for us to connect with larger national corporate organisations. We observed an immediate impact in the first year with violent on-field incidents, reducing by 80% within the SNFL juniors. Our programs have a positive impact in changing attitudes and behaviours towards violence, as evidenced by this feedback from a survey. Before the program, 73% of players had previously intentionally hit, slapped, punched or pushed someone. After the program, 90% of the players were more aware of the consequences of violence on the broader community. The success of the program and what makes it so special was in looking at sporting clubs and being part of the solution to combating violence within the community. By taking a whole of club approach to tackling violence, it meant the problem was shared across the leadership of the organisation, the players, their families and the broader sporting community. What is innovative about the program is that it provides participants with a real story to unpack rather than hypothetical or case study. It also is adaptable to all sporting codes and recreational activities involving young people. We're also now running similar programs with Baseball SA and Rugby SA. We hope to be running it in soccer and basketball environments in the very near future. Congratulations to everyone involved in the Don't Let It Be Game Over Violence Prevention Program on your silver award in the community sector for your efforts to tackle on-field and off-field violence in sport. I commend you for working with sporting clubs to be part of the solution to combating violence in the community. The winning of such a highly esteemed award gives us the opportunity to celebrate with all the Sammy D Foundation team and its partners. It also gives us further recognition can continue our valued work across Australia. Thanks again for all your support. Our first silver award winner from the police sector is Project Walway from the New South Wales Police Force. Assistant Commissioner Peter McKenna from the New South Wales Police will accept the award. In 2018, when I was the commander of the Irana Midwestern Police District, I saw a significant over-representation of Aboriginal youth going into the criminal justice system. In Dubbo in particular, uh, this was an exorbitant amount of Aboriginal kids coming in and out of the custody system, really making no real impact uh, on crime and only having a, a worse trajectory uh, for their lives. The purpose of the Warway program was to try and make a difference in that space, try and give these kids a better start in life and really just to try something different. So Warway was established with uh, three serving police officers and also an Aboriginal community liaison officer. Together with our Aboriginal community liaison officer and working with our PCYC on the back of the Commissioner's Rise Up strategy, the Aboriginal youth team was established. The Aboriginal youth team was dedicated to keeping Aboriginal kids out of the criminal justice system and diverting them into other forms of education or employment. As the police commander and working with this team of, of police and the ACLO, I'm so proud that we came together and really made a difference in town. 
We had to work with community partners, certainly. We couldn't do it on our own. But a review of the project after 12 months showed a consistent 60% reduction in Aboriginal youth being charged in Dubbo. Some of these kids that we were working with, through no fault of their own, but purely by circumstance, had found themselves uh, in, in a really poor trajectory as to where they were heading in life. And this just goes to show that if you get people that care, people that really want to make a difference, work in with other community members, and indeed uh, work with the Aboriginal community, wow, what a difference you can make and what a difference these guys have made. I'm pleased to present this silver award in the police sector to Project Wildway for their great work providing opportunities for at-risk youth people to succeed through diversionary programs, education and employment. Congratulations to all involved. Thank you so much. Winning this award is uh, really significant. It makes me really proud to, to think that uh, I had a team of police there and an ATLO who have made such a difference in people's lives. Not only these kids, but their families, the community generally, the relationship between police and the Aboriginal community, it all came together as a result of these police and this Aboriginal community liaison officer working tirelessly to be there for these youth. Well, as a police commander at Dubbo, and, and now I know I've moved on from there, but I've still very much uh, got my heart out in Dubbo and, and the work that has been done out there, I'm extremely proud to be receiving this award. I'm extremely proud for my team to be recognised in this respect. And I'm extremely proud to be part of a New South Wales police force that shows they care. Our final silver award winner from the police sector is Project Vigilance from Tasmania. Senior Sergeant Penny Reardon from Tasmania Police will accept the award. Project Vigilance came out of a package that was announced by the Commonwealth Government in September 2015 where there were funding set aside for initiatives to improve the safety of women and children impacted upon by family violence. Project Vigilance has reduced the incidence of family violence on those that have been subject to the electronic monitoring trial. Statistically, at the end of the trial, which was the three year period, we conducted an analysis of those that had participated in the trial. And that analysis showed us that we had a 76% decrease in high risk incidents. We had a 75% reduction in assaults, an 81% reduction in threats, 74% reduction in property damage, and a 100% decrease in stalking offences. Also, at the end of the trial, 80% of those who had been subject to electronic monitoring had not re-offended six months post their electronic monitoring device being removed. So those statistics said to us that the electronic monitoring was successful. It was reducing the number of family violence incidents for those that were participating in the trial and had a positive impact upon our community. The trial has also had an impact upon victims during the court process with victims being required less often to have to go to court to give evidence regarding breaches of exclusion zones, as the electronic monitoring information can be relied upon as the evidence. And we have expert witnesses from the police who attend court and give that evidence on behalf of the victim, thus reducing the impacts on victims and children's court appearances. The entire project team over the lifetime of the trial worked very hard to get project vigilance to come to fruition. It was the first time that we'd utilised electronic monitoring in Tasmania, so we had a lot of hard work in front of us. Winning this award is validation of all the hard work and effort that the team have put in to make the trial the success it was. And it's also validation for the community of Tasmania and in particular all those people that are impacted upon by family violence in our community that Tasmania Police is working hard to try and improve their safety and also to reduce the impacts and incidents of family violence on those that are affected. Some of the great work being done here in Tasmania has been recognised and it's an honour to present Project Vigilance with a silver award in the police sector. Tasmania Police, in collaboration with the Department of Justice, undertook a nation-first trial of electronic monitoring to enable the tracking of high-risk family violence perpetrators. Project Vigilance delivered outstanding outcomes improving the safety and well-being of women 
and children subjected to family violence and increasing perpetrator accountability and convictions. This innovative approach aligns with the Tasmania Government's Safe Homes, Families, Communities Action Plan for Family and Sexual Violence, with a vision to ensure that all Tasmanians are safe, equal and respected, that our homes, families and communities are free from all forms of family and sexual violence. This award recognises the project team's commitment to reduce the incidence and effects of family violence in the Tasmanian community. Congratulations on a fantastic effort in helping keeping Tasmanians safe. Often in law enforcement, hard work and dedication of project teams, such as Project Vigilance, goes unnoticed due to the nature of our work. Winning this award is recognition of the validation of hard work that the whole project team have displayed and their commitment to the project over the lifetime of the trial. It has been acknowledged that the successful innovation of this technology trial by Tasmania Police has improved the safety and wellbeing of victims and children in our community who have been impacted upon by family violence. And Tasmania Police are still working hard to enhance their safety and reduce the impacts of family violence upon everyone in our community. I will now introduce the Bronze Award winners for this year. There are two from the community sector and three from the police sector. Our first community sector Bronze Award winner is Body Safety Superstars from Victoria. CEO Deanne Carson will accept the award. My name's Deanne Carson. I'm CEO of Body Safety Australia. Body Safety Australia was established in 2015 to promote childhoods free from violence where children could enjoy equitable and respectful relationships. Body Safety Australia has developed our Superstars program. Superstars is a program delivered to children in early childhood education and primary school to prevent childhood sexual abuse. It's a whole of community program that also works with parents and educators and teachers so that they can identify grooming and intercept and report if necessary. We are so excited to have won an Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Award. Winning this award means that our work being done in the primary prevention of harm to children and young people is being recognised and the importance of educating adults on being able to identify grooming both on and offline and intercept and report if necessary is now something that can be replicated across the country. The Body Safety Superstars program is working to prevent childhood sexual abuse. We hear from children and young people on an almost daily basis that they have been groomed and that somebody has tried to hurt them and that having done our program, they've been empowered to stand up, to say no, and to reach out to safe adults who can help them. We know from working with adults that they are better able to identify grooming and they feel more empowered to step in and set boundaries that help keep their children safe. I'm very proud of all of the work our team of educators do, but I think the thing that heartens me most is the stories I hear from children and young people themselves or the emails we get from parents who say that their children were, once in danger, able to implement the skills that they had learnt. I also hear a lot from adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse who say that doing our programs have helped them understand what occurred to them as children and be able to implement skills as parents to ensure that this didn't happen to their own children. Congratulations to everyone involved in the Body Safety Superstars program on your bronze award in the community sector. Your work to empower and educate children, young people, their families and professionals on protective behaviours and body safety education is significant and it has the power to create lifelong benefits. Our Superstars program has already received wide recognition in Victoria, but winning the Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Award allows us to have that recognition on a national level. 
I would strongly encourage other grassroots and community organisations to apply for future awards. Our second community sector bronze award winner is Turning Corners from Queensland. Alison Gill, the CEO of Brave Hearts Foundation Limited, will accept the award. Hello, my name is Alison Gill and I'm the CEO of Brave Hearts. I'm coming to you today from Yugen Bear Country, so I'd like to pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging. For almost a quarter of a century, Brave Hearts has been at the forefront of protecting Australian children from child sexual harm. And our program, Turning Corners, is at the heart of that prevention. We are very honoured, and I speak on behalf of Brave Hearts and Dr Deirdre Thompson, who devised this program and then launched it in 2016, to be a recipient of this year's 2021 Crime and Violence Prevention Awards. We are incredibly honoured. Over a third, or at least a third, of all sexual offences against children and young people are committed by other children and young people. So the Turning Corners program addresses that. It provides an integrated and comprehensive response to children aged 12 to 18 who are engaging in or may engage in harmful sexual behaviours using a number of different treatment modalities, including individual counselling, family counselling and group work. This program, Turning Corners, is changing the trajectory of young people's lives. We are incredibly proud of that work and we promote it heavily, engaging with a number of different agencies and government. It is an incredible program that demonstrates impact by where at the end of the program, the young person writes a letter to their self. And we can see just the impact that the program has had on that young person. It's incredible. And therefore, changing the direction or turning a corner in their young life. It's very important work and we are incredibly honoured to be recognised for that work through being a recipient of this year's awards. We wholeheartedly are excited about promoting the fact that we have been acknowledged and what this also means is it's a validation for our great work and just another chance to promote it wherever we possibly can because it truly is a life-changing program. The Bronze Award in the Community Sector goes to the Brave Hearts Turning Corners program. Congratulations to those involved in this program for their work which provides early intervention support for adolescents who may experience sexual harm. The program has achieved long-term outcomes for these young people who previously may not have been able to access the support they needed. Their work providing early intervention approaches and treatments is extraordinarily effective. Well done to the team. On behalf of Brave Hearts and myself and the team who work on Turning Corners, we'd like to thank the Australian Institute of Criminology and the government for this incredible award. If you were thinking about nominating, please do. It's a wonderful and important award that talks directly to the work that our team is doing. So on behalf of everybody at Brave Hearts and our Turning Corners program, and all the thousands of children whose lives we've been able to change directly and set them on a better path, we say thank you. Our first Police Sector Bronze Award winner is Queensland Police Service, I Live My Life Without a Knife, Knife Crime Prevention Campaign. Senior Sergeant Ken Murray will accept the award. I Live My Life Without a Knife it was a campaign in relation to crime prevention led by the Queensland Police Service uh, with support from Logan City Council and Logan PCYC. It was in relation to the carrying of knives in public places. It was about changing our attitude and culture of our youth to not carry knives in public places. We altered uh, their culture by looking to them through 
social and normative influences, uh, community leaders and influencers who could send a better message, a strong message to our youth to uh, think of their actions, think of their consequences, make stronger choices, do better. The campaign ran for six months and saw a dramatic reduction in uh, our youth carrying knives in the public place, which then less, meant less uh, serious offences where knives caused great harm. Yeah, over that six month period, we saw upwards of a reduction of 28%, seeing less knives found in our, on our youth in public places, and that led to also less serious offences. Uh, we did not have any serious uh, loss of life to knives for that period, uh, not only the six months we ran the campaign, but for a sustained period afterwards. The most important thing about awards or crime prevention is that it brings education and awareness to issues. So by winning an award, it brings a topic up into a national um, level and that we can understand such issues as knife crime. And by that, other agencies might understand the problem, uh, might also provide extra funding in relation to research, in particular for knife crime, and that going forward to other agencies and may maybe even do a national campaign in relation to addressing such issues. I'm proud of uh, everybody. I'm a proud of the uh, team. I'm a proud of other agencies embracing the concept. I'm proud that we made a difference. I'm proud of our youth for making a difference, particularly in Logan and choosing not to carry our knives. I'm proud that we actually raised a positive feedback from the community who accepted the message and understood what we were trying to do and that we're trying to make our youth have brighter futures. Congratulations to those involved in I Live My Life Without a Knife campaign for winning a bronze award in the police sector. This prevention focused campaign aims to educate young Queenslanders about the risks of knife carrying and knife crime. The campaign's trial in Logan District was successful in reducing knife related offences in public places and has since rolled out statewide. Well done. I just wish to thank everyone who was involved, the time they gave, um, most of that time was in their own time. Uh, I wish to thank in particular um, Assistant uh, Commissioner Ben Marcus for giving me the time, the support and showing me that ideas do matter and things can happen. I wish to also thank the Beasley family. Um, they lost their son to knife crime and they've always been um, something I've drawn upon and they show me uh, how successful even a family who suffered from offences can make a big difference. Uh, I just thank everyone, to the police media team who've helped me put all these packages together, Logan City Council who sat with me and went to the schools and were on the ground with me, the PCYC influencers who stood up um, and, and from their own community led messaging um, to the kids and made a difference and I thank everyone for that. Our next Police Sector Bronze Award winner is Victoria Police Vehicle Crime Squad Second Hand Dealer Inspection and Closure Program. Detective Senior Sergeant John Dimos will accept the award. Winning the Bronze Australian Crime Prevention Award is a fantastic recognition for the hard work the Victoria Police Vehicle Crime Squad team members have invested in this project. This recognition provides an opportunity to highlight the importance of the work being undertaken by the team and help educate the community about reducing vehicle theft in Victoria. We established the Second Hand Deal Inspection Closure Program back in December of 2019. When it came to our attention that numerous motor vehicle second hand dealers were not complying with the registration requirements and committing serious offences. With the introduction of new Victorian legislation amendments, my team identified the need to provide education firstly to the second hand dealer businesses about the introduction of these closure order provisions, reaffirming their requirements regarding record keeping in line with this new legislation. The second phase was centred on enforcement activities by conducting proactive businesses investigations and putting pressure on these illegal motor vehicle traders and operators. Vehicle Crime Squad investigators provided leadership and took ownership of the new second-hand dealer legislation by developing new policies and processes to ensure the best practical application of education, compliance and enforcement. The impact of the program I think speaks for itself. In May 2020, the Vehicle Crime Squad issued its first interim closure order in the state of Victoria on a non-compliant motor vehicle scrap metal business. 
In the past 12 months, the Vehicle Crimes Court has issued penalty notice infringements totaling more than $45,000 and closed 17 rogue businesses. These proactive investigations have resulted in the team recovering more than 200 stolen motor vehicles, achieving a 12% reduction in profit-motivated vehicle theft. I'm most proud of the commitment and service delivery that my team has provided to the Victorian community. Winning the award is a great honour and national recognition of the hard work of the Victoria Police Vehicle Crime Squad. I encourage other Victoria Police units to also highlight their incredible work they do for the community, in particular in fighting crime and violence. I'm pleased to present the Victoria Police Vehicle Crime Squad with the Bronze Award in the police sector for their second-hand dealer inspection and closure program, which is reducing the trade in stolen motor vehicles, both locally and overseas, and holding offenders to account. Their multifaceted focus on education, compliance, and enforcement has put pressure on illegal vehicle operators and significantly disrupted profit-motivated and organised crime motor vehicle offending. I would like to take this opportunity to firstly thank the Honourable Minister for Home Affairs, Karen Andrews, Michael Phelan and the Australian Institute of Criminology. I would also like to thank all the board members of the Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards and the support that my team has received from Victoria Police Crime Command. It is a great acknowledgement and recognition for the hard work the members from the Victoria Police Vehicle Crime Squad have been undertaking. In particular, the regulation and enforcement of the scrap metal industry, enabling us to combat organised crime, profit motivated vehicle theft in the state of Victoria. Thank you. Our final Police Sector Bronze Award winner for today is Western Australia Police Force Tom Price Youth Action Plan. Sergeant Nicole Mizzen Officer in Charge will accept the award. Tom Price Youth Action Plan was established in 2019 um, by the Tom Price Police. The idea came about because we had very disengaged youth. We had a high um, percentage of our crime was being committed by youth um, across the 2018-2019 years. Ultimately our goal was to reduce crime and violence within the community of Tom Price. Um, and our Tom Price Youth Action Plan has had a significant impact in achieving those results. So um, if I can just provide you with some stats, in 2018 we had 146 offences um, committed by juveniles within the Tom Price sub-district. Of that 146, 46 of those were done by 11 particular youths. So we certainly set out about um, establishing relationships with those youths. They, they were basically, when we looked at it, it was um, youth at risk. So from potentially low to mid socioeconomic families, backgrounds, um, some of them from our indigenous community, um, who we had no relationship with, we had no rapport. We weren't able to go out and pop out and say hello. These youths didn't know us personally. Um, they weren't aware of police, they were very anti-police. So we really set about um, establishing really strong relationships with those children. Um, we did that by um, engaging with the schools, um, with all the sports programs, um, within the Tom Price Emergency Services Cadets. Um, there were a, a really a, a number of programs that we got ourselves involved in. Um, the result of that was in 2020, we actually had a 60% reduction in youth crime, um, which we again, we're really, really proud of. We now have children coming to us, telling us when something's not right in town, telling us when something's not right at home, or they're feeling a bit off, or they're not having a good day at school. We now drive down the street and we get waves from all the kids, and um, that is the aspect that I'm most proud of over this um, project. I think it's fantastic that we were nominated for this award. Um, it's something that, you know, you don't receive awards and it's some, certainly something that I'm very proud of um, that we can now say to, to our bosses, to our community, that the work we're doing is having progress. We have fabulous support within the town um, through some sponsors, some businesses, um, local mining, and um, yeah, I'm just really, really proud of um, having the whole town on board and we have the finances there now. We have the groups established and um, I think going forward we're in a much better place. Congratulations to everyone involved in the Tom Price Youth Action Plan Program on your bronze award in the police sector. Your work building rapport 
and trust is commendable and this has led to a decrease in youth offending in the Tom Price sub-district. I would encourage agencies and organisations to um, be thankful when you're nominated for such an award. Um, I believe it's important that sometimes you are acknowledged for some good work, um, as equally if, if you do something wrong and you make mistakes, that you learn from them. Um, and and that's, that's what life's about, isn't it? Where you uh, live and learn about what's gone on and what's happened and how you can change and probably make the future better for yourself and your community. And I believe we've done that. And I believe this recognition um, is the positive that the team needs to strive forward and continue to be uh, good police officers, um, good people, and um, really build our community into what it deserves to be. Um, I'm very biased about Tom Price, um, fabulous community, fabulous organisations, great mining um, town, and yeah, very, very proud of the town, the youth, and particularly the police officers at Tom Price Police Station and the work they've done. So thank you for this award, uh, very honoured, and um, looking forward to um, celebrating with the troops and just having them know um, what a fabulous job I think they've done and how important their role is within this action plan. Thank you. Congratulations to all the winners. Your programs truly have made a positive difference. Local solutions, such as those we're acknowledging and celebrating today, are often the best way to deal with local issues. That's why the government is committed to supporting and working with community groups. Although crime prevention projects are tailored to different crime types and local contexts, the underlying principles of a successful crime prevention project are the same. Today's winning projects embody all the required characteristics, including community engagement, close partnership with local groups, and ongoing monitoring and evaluation. Congratulations again to all those receiving awards today. You should be proud to know your hard work is both valued and inspiring. I commend you for the crucial role you play in reducing the impact of crime on our community. Thank you. Thank you for those kind words, Minister. Congratulations to the winners recognised today. I commend you on your achievements and positive impacts on your communities. Thank you for joining us for this year's virtual Australian Crime and Violence Prevention Awards Ceremony. We hope to see you in person next year.